Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. So this video is going to be the first in a series I'm making on um, how to make neural networks from scratch in in uh, Julia. So this is actually like my first uh, my first time doing these uh, Julia programming tutorial videos. Um, I've been using the language a lot recently, and I've been I've been liking it. And in this series, we're going to learn how to make a uh, neural network completely from scratch, um, so that that way we'll understand exactly what's happening at every step and uh, kind of build up intuition for how um, how neural networks actually work and also get some Julia practice along the way. Um, so the way we're going to do this is, in this first video, I'm going to be showing you guys kind of what the end product is going to look like, what we're going to have at the end so that we, um, so we can kind of see what the goal is. And uh, the end product is going to be... Um, is going to be something like this actual real package that I wrote called simplegrad.jl. Um, this is a package I've been working on lately in Julia. And yeah, this is this is the GitHub uh, repo here. And then I also have a documentation site. Um, do yeah, documentation site. So the documentation shows you like how to use this package and you can use it for like basic uh, machine learning applications, um, like simple neural networks, things like that. But then the documentation site also has a uh, under the hood section where you can read how everything works. And it's kind of written like it's supposed to be like almost like a textbook chapter even. So the goal of this um, package is, is partly to be actually usable for machine learning applications and also partly to be um, educational so that the code is simple enough that you can actually look under the hood and see exactly how everything's working, um, like every step of the way. So, um, so yeah, you guys can partly learn about this just by like reading the documentation website because I, I tried to write it especially to be like easy to read and easy to understand how all the code works. So it's like uh, educational. But um, I'm sure some of you guys are like me and you you prefer not to like read. Um, like read text you prefer to learn by like watching a tutorial video. I'm also like that. So um, in addition to having this documentation site, I'm also gonna be making this um, this video series showing you guys like how to make something like this package completely from scratch. Um, and yeah, this is kind of based on Andre Karpathy's uh, Micrograd project, which is kind of doing the same thing in Python. Um, yeah, great tutorial series showing um, how to make a neural network from scratch in Python. But yeah, like I said, I'm using Julia recently, so I decided to do something like similar project, um, but in Julia. Um, but okay, before we get into actually doing everything from scratch ourselves, this first uh, video is just gonna be showing you guys like what the end product looks like and like kind of what it can do and how to use it. So um, yeah, also I, I thought I would make these tutorials with um, Jupyter Notebooks. Maybe you guys can leave a comment if you have a preference on this, if you prefer Jupyter Notebooks or um, my usual way of just doing it in VS Code. Um, but yeah, I thought for this series I'd make them in, uh, in Jupyter Notebooks. Um, okay, so first things first, let's just talk about how to install this um, package. Although when we, when we start actually doing it from scratch, you won't actually need to have this installed because we're gonna we're gonna build out the whole thing like from scratch in like raw Julia code. But just for this lesson, showing you guys how it works, um, this is how you install it if you don't already have it installed. You say um, you say using package and then package.add simple grad. And then it's actually like an official um, it's like an official Julia package on their official uh, package registry. So you can install it um, just like straight like that. It, it doesn't require any kind of fancy steps. This will automatically find it and um, install it for you. Um, yeah, and then just import it by saying using simple grad. Um, okay, so now we're ready to um, start using it. So the basics of um, of this simple grad package is that there's there's two kinds of um, what are called composite types. We can think of that as like a, a type of object uh, similar to like a class in Python um, or like a, a struct, just like a, a type of object basically. So the first is called the value type. So we um, can define a value like this, just say value and then some number that we want it to be. Um, so value equals uh, four, for example. Um, and then, or sorry, x equals value four. And then we can say print line x. 
and then yeah, that that means we've um, defined this this value to be uh, to be four. And then the second type is what we're calling um, a tensor. So we can define a tensor like this. Say um, a equals tensor, and then um, tensors store an array of numbers, and to be specific, a two-dimensional array. So like a matrix or like um, a row or column vector. So we, we define a tensor like this. Um, just give it give it a um, two-dimensional array of numbers. Um, I can say like print line A. Whoops. And then since it's a since it's a tensor, it also has a shape. So we could also say like um, print line size A and whoops, what I don't know why I keep doing that. Sorry guys. And then yeah, it should be uh, two by two because yeah, we have a uh, two by two um, tensor here. So the key idea for this um, this package and this uh, tutorial series in general is that tensors are are very similar to values. Um, and a lot of like the, the functionality is going to be the same and it's going to be like implemented the same way in the code, but it's just that tensors are just more complicated because they're, they're storing, um, two dimensional arrays, which could be like matrices or, um, vectors. So everything is more complicated that we're going to have to do. Like the, the arithmetic is going to be like matrix multiplication, for example, instead of just like regular multiplication. And then that's going to make also um, the, the backward passes for the uh, gradient calculation. It's also going to be like more complicated, um, like arithmetic and stuff. And it's going to have complications about like size and like shape and things like that. But the general principles about how everything is going to work um, in terms of the machine learning are going to be basically the same for um, values and tensors. So when we eventually get to doing like the real neural network, at that point, we're going to be using tensors and talking about like how to um, like work with the tensors and like program them from scratch. But in order to explain um, the basics, like the basics of how we're going to set up this code and how we're going to track operations and like calculate gradients and stuff, for all of that, I'm going to use values because even though even though we're eventually going to be using tensors for like the real um, the real neural networks, it's going to be a lot easier to explain the concepts of how all this stuff works um, with values because it's going to be like easier calculations. So we, we can worry less about like the arithmetic and focus more on um, the concepts of gradient tracking and like back propagation and uh, machine learning and things like that. So yeah, basically taking the same approach as um, Andre Karpathy in, in his in his micrograd series, um, just starting with values for the sake of being able to explain things um, in simple terms. Although we are eventually going to get back to tensors. Um, and eventually learn how to do the real neural network um, in tensors. Uh, but yeah, for now, let's just talk more about like what we can do with values. So um, just make, we'll just pick another value again, call it x, um, maybe just make it 3 this time. Um, okay, so values actually store two numbers. So the, the first number they store is called... Um, value.data or x.data here. So this is the actual number that it's storing. So in this case, um, x.data will be three. Um, and we just access it just by just by calling dot data. It's the, uh, the data field of the uh, value. That's the actual number that we're keeping track of. Um, the, second, the second number it's storing is the gradient of this variable. Um, so for now, um, we can look at that with x dot grad. It's just going to be zero because it, it's not, um, it's not, uh, it's not really a gradient yet. Right now, it's just a placeholder that will eventually be filled up by a gradient. So if you guys are confused, what I mean when I say um, gradient, the gradient is is basically, um, is basically going to allow us to do calculations and 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 end up with a number at the end, and then at the end with our final result we can calculate the derivative of that result with respect to all the variables that went into calculating it. And then um, that derivative will be stored in the variable in this gradient field. So um, yeah, let's try, let's try an example just to, uh, just to help you guys to see what I'm talking about here. So let's say we have, you know, we have already x equals our value three. 
we'll say y equals um, value 4. And then we can do operations with these values. So we can, um, we can uh, yeah, do like basic arithmetic with them. So now we can say z equals x plus y. And then we can take a look at um, what z is now. So z is also a value, and it's storing the result of this um, addition operation we had here. So we had x equals 3, y equals 4, um, and then z is x plus y, so 7. And then z is also um, a value. It's, it's not just a uh, Julia number. It's our uh, special value um, data type. Uh, okay. So now we're getting to the cool part. This is the part that is like um, probably I would say the most important concept in in neural networks is what's called back propagation. Um, so I know this looks simple now, but we're going to do something that is going to it's going to become very powerful, and we're going to see like how much cool things we can do with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say backward z. And what this is going to do is this is going to automatically calculate the derivative of z with respect to all of the variables that went into, went into making z. So it's going to calculate the derivative of z with respect to x and with respect to y automatically. Yeah, so it doesn't look like much, but now we can check, um, now we can check the gradient of x again, x dot grad. And we're going to see it's 1. So what does that mean? That means that um, the derivative of z with respect to x equals um, 1, which is it's just the, the definition of um, a derivative in an addition operation is 1. So another way of thinking about that is if we increase x by 1, our value of z will also increase by 1. So if we, had, if we had made x equals 4 and then done this operation, we get z equals 8. Um, because, yeah, increasing x by 1 will also increase um, z by 1. Um, we can also check um, the gradient of y, and it should be uh, the same, right? Um, so this means that the derivative of z with respect to y also equals 1, because increasing y by 1 will also increase um, z by 1. And then um, we can also do this with uh, multiplication, and not only multiplication, but um, many other many other operations, uh, many other like, kinds of arithmetic. But I'll show you guys multiplication just for now, um, just for another quick example. So we can say x equals value uh, 6. We could make this a, a float or an int. Um, Make it a float just for demonstration. Um, y equals value two. Z equals x times y, and then can print out um, z now. And yeah, we get for z. Um, it's a value uh, value um, twelve. Then we can do the same thing. We can um, we can automatically calculate the uh, derivative of z with respect to x and y in this um, backward pass. Uh, so yeah, looks like it worked. And then we can say print line x dot grad. We get two for that. So so what does that mean? That's that's the derivative of this um, of z with respect to x. So what that means is that, um, yeah, derivative of z with respect to x, um, that just equals y because that's that's the that's the definition of a derivative uh, of a multiplication. Um, it, it's just uh, whatever whatever it's multiplying. So it's just to remind you guys a little bit of calculus. If, if we have like y equals two times x or something, the derivative of y with respect to x would just be two here, right? Um, yeah, so it's reviewing a little bit of a uh, little bit of calculus. So yeah, d, d z d x equals y um, equals two, right? And then we can check um, the y gradient. 
And yeah, that's six. So that's basically telling us dz dy equals x, uh, which equals six, right? Um, okay, so this is like the basic functionality of this um, simple grad package, and this is basically what we're going to be like building out ourselves. Because you guys, you guys probably can't tell at this point, but even though even though this is very simple um, for us to use, uh, there's actually some some pretty um, pretty clever math. Not super complicated, but but pretty clever. Uh, stuff going on in the background that's allowing us to have this kind of functionality. Um, and yeah, we're going to be learning how to like build this kind of like gradient tracking um, back propagation like engine um, by ourselves. So yeah, if you guys are interested in um, learning how to do that, please um, please check out the next video in the series. And uh, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna really do all this um, from scratch. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you guys next time.